Oh, um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me tonight. Like they said, we are painting Garden Gingham tonight. Um, I'm super excited to paint this with you all. It's a really fun, brightly colored, um, spring-inspired piece. This is a really great painting for Mother's Day, which is just around the corner. Um, I really wanted to incorporate some really vibrant and fun colors into our painting tonight. So we're going to be using some of my favorite colors from the folk art line. Like always, um, let us know where you're tuning in from. If you have any questions throughout our class tonight, Caitlin from Plaid will be in the chat answering all of your project related questions. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We'll start by running through the supply list so that you can make sure that you have everything that you want to have with you to follow along with us tonight. We are working with a 10 by 10 canvas. Um, it can be a stretched canvas or like a pouring canvas. I'm working with a 10 by 10 wood panel, but any sort of 10 by 10 canvas that you have will work just fine. I have my palette paper, um, an assortment of flat brushes and a couple of smaller uh, liner brushes and detail brushes. I have some painter's tape. Um, we also included this pattern for our class tonight, this little butterfly pattern. If you missed it, you can go to the class listing and right underneath where you see the supplies, there will be a link for you to download this free PDF and print it so that you're ready for the class. We're also going to be working with some transfer paper. And of course, our lovely folk art acrylic paint. So running through those, we have vintage white, light lavender, minted aqua, desert flower, teal, school bus yellow, conch shell, and festive fuchsia. And then last but not least, we have a heat gun. So I'm gonna be working with this tonight just to kind of speed up the process so that we don't have to wait around for things to dry. And I also have a pencil. So if you have all of those things with you, then we are ready to go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna load some of my vintage white onto my palette. I'm going to take my three quarter inch flat brush and start base coating my entire canvas. So I see a question, um, where is the PDF? If you go to the Michaels Community Classroom tab, um, you will see the supply list there. And um, right in that uh, project listing, you'll also see a blue link um, that is just the class name. That'll take you to a free PDF that you can um, download and print at home. And this color that we're using right now to base coat our canvas is Folk Art Vintage White.
Okay, so now would be a good time to go ahead and also paint the sides of our canvas. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do that for myself later, but feel free to do that now if you'd like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse my flat brush. And take my heat gun and start drying my canvas. And if they don't have vintage white, what could they use? Um, any any white or any off-white color, ivory color would work just fine in place of vintage white. Okay. Okay, so we're about ready for our next step once your canvas is nice and dry. I am going to teach you guys a really simple and easy way to create a gingham pattern. Um, this pattern also leans really well for the winter season if you're wanting to create like a buffalo check pattern. Um, this technique works the same. So what we're gonna do is I am going to roll out a piece of painter's tape about the width of my canvas and I am going to butt it right up to the edge of my canvas and make sure it's nice and flush. Then I'm gonna repeat the same thing again. And now I'm gonna butt oop, this piece of tape right up to the previous one. might be sensing a pattern here. We're gonna do the same thing again, right above our previous tape. But now I'm gonna go back and remove our second piece, make sure that these two are nice and attached to our canvas. And I'm gonna repeat this process going all the way up. So really what we're doing is we're creating a really steady stripe pattern and we're treating that um, second piece of tape that we laid down as just a space marker so that we get a really even pattern. Going all the way up. One final strip for this orientation. Okay, I'm gonna re remove my space piece of tape and now I'm just gonna run my fingers across all of those lengths of tape to make sure that it's really nice and secure on my canvas. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip my canvas 
to the other side. So now our stripes are vertical and we're gonna repeat the same exact process, but now going the opposite direction on our canvas. Starting at the bottom. And just securing that with my finger. Almost done. I don't waste this long strip of tape. I'm going to use a smaller piece to be our space marker for our last row. Perfect. So one more time, we're going to go ahead and smooth out all of our strips of tape with our hands to make sure it's really nice and secure onto our canvas. Okay, so once your canvas looks like mine, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply some of our school bus yellow onto our canvas. Okay, I'm going to rinse off my three quarter inch flat brush, make sure it's nice and dry and use that to fill in all of these spaces with our school bus yellow. And if they don't have school bus yellow, can they just use any type of yellow? Yeah, absolutely.
Okay, so once your canvas looks a little bit like a checkerboard, we're ready for the grand reveal. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these strips of tape. I love this part. It's so satisfying. Ta -da! But we're not done yet. It's not quite gingham. Um, so the next step that we're going to do, I haven't rinsed my brush yet. It's still loaded with my school bus yellow. I'm going to take some clean, regular tap water. I'm going to dip my brush into my water, make sure it gets nice and wet. And then I am just going to mix that water into a little bit of my school bus yellow. I don't want it to be too too runny because then you know the water will have a mind of its own and it'll go in places that I don't necessarily want it to but um, just enough that it's going to be a, quite a bit of a lighter shade than it would traditionally be if it was just a acrylic paint without it being watered down. Okay so the next step we're going to do um, keeping with our three quarter inch flat brush I am going to go ahead with my watered down paint I need a little bit more water. That's all right. Needs to be a little bit runnier. So now I'm going to take my watered down paint mixture and in between each square, I'm going to go ahead and connect the two squares with my watered down paint, even continuing off the edge of our canvas here and here. And I'm just treating those um, squares that we created with our tape as a reference or as a guide for my lines. A little bit more of our watered down mixture. And if you haven't guessed already, once we get to this point, I'm going to flip my canvas around just like we did when we were taping it off. And I'm going to follow this exact process, but going the opposite direction, connecting those opaque yellow squares.
And ta-da, we have our beautiful gingham pattern. Isn't that a fun technique? So like I said, obviously we're painting a spring butterfly. So this works really well to create a spring inspired gingham pattern. But I also love to use this technique around the holidays, around Christmas time to create a really beautiful buffalo check with red or green or blue. Okay, so once we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and use my heat gun again and make sure this is really dry before we are ready to move on to our next step. Okay, my canvas is nice and dry, so we are ready to go ahead and transfer our pattern. If you've never transferred a pattern before with transfer paper, don't worry, I'll walk you through it. So first things first, we're going to take our transfer paper. A lot of times, transfer paper will have a um, little note in, the in one of the corners that will say this side up or something like that so that you know which side to face down. But if you're not sure, um, it's a good rule of thumb to just test it out before you go ahead and start transferring um, a very detailed pattern. I like to always just give it a little test, make sure that it's on the right side. So I know that this transfer paper, I want to have, um, there's a chalky side and there's also a waxy side. I know that I want my waxy side down, but just to double check, I'm gonna transfer it to a scrap sheet of paper. And you have that little line there. So it did transfer. So I'm gonna stick my waxy side down, center it right in the center of my canvas, secure it with some tape. Okay, and now right on top of that, we are going to place our butterfly. So I'm gonna make sure that my butterfly is just about centered. And I think it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure that down as well with another strip of tape. Okay. <clears throat> so once your project is layered, canvas, transfer paper, pattern, you're ready to start tracing. So all we're going to do is I'm using a pencil, but you could use a pen, a stylus, whatever you want to use that you have on hand um, to trace your pattern. So I'm going to start with the body of our butterfly. Move to the antenna. 
Um, some people like to use something like a stylus when they're transferring a pattern. Um, I prefer to use something like a pencil or a pen because that way I can see the markings of the pencil or the pen and I know which areas I've transferred because sometimes, sometimes I forget. My brain is working a little too quickly and I forget which areas that I have already covered. Okay, we'll give it a little flip, see? Ta-da! We have a perfect butterfly shape onto our canvas. We're ready to get into the fun part now. Hmm. Okay. So, the next thing we're gonna do is load some of our conch shell onto our palette. And I'm gonna take a fairly small flat brush. This is a number 10 flat, just kind of a small to medium sized flat brush. And I always say work smarter, not harder. So I'm gonna flip my canvas around because we're gonna use our conch shell to paint in the top wings of our butterfly. And I'm just gonna carefully paint right over those transfer lines because we don't want that in our final painting. That would not be very pretty. Moving on to our second wing. And I see that comment. This is a number 10 flat brush. Okay, and I missed some questions. Okay. Um, what kind of palette were you using before? Um, my, this palette? I believe so, yeah. This is just a wax coated um, palette paper book, but you could use really anything that you prefer. Um, I like to use wax coated palette paper, but you could use um, a paper plate, a styrofoam plate, whatever you prefer to um, use as your paint palette. Okay. And then um, let's see. And then could they use baby pink or yeah, mix absolutely. it with a bit of an orange? Yeah, for sure. Even baby pink alone would be nice for this painting. Okay. And that's kind of the beauty of the butterfly that we're painting tonight. Um, if you could totally switch up this color palette if you wanted to. Um, you could use baby blue or light lavender and just totally switch up the color palette if you wanted. Okay. And then do you also think that you could put the original in the frame as well? Like maybe above if you have room? Yeah. Thank you. Of course. 
All right, so once your canvas looks like mine, we're ready to move on to our next step. So I am going to trade in for a smaller flat brush. This is a number eight flat, and I'm gonna go ahead and load some of my minted aqua and some of my teal onto my palette. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of paint mixing. For this paint mixture, I'm going to mix a ratio of about two parts minted aqua to one part teal. And I'm gonna mix those two colors until they're really well combined. Okay, so now we are mixing about a, just a really soft teal color. And I'm gonna use this color that we just mixed and we're gonna go ahead and fill in these two sections of our butterfly. And there's another question. Um... They're wondering, what can I use instead of the thing you use to draw the butterfly? <laughs> um, actually, if you don't have transfer paper at home, if you have some regular white chalk, um, this is a really old trick. If you grab a piece of printer paper and you take the chalk and you have to uh, totally cover the entire paper in your chalk. I like to use the long round side of the chalk. We just want to make sure that that whole sheet of paper is totally covered in your chalk and then put it chalk side down onto your painting. Um, you can actually transfer a pattern like that. Okay, so next up, once you're done filling in our darker blue portion of the butterfly wings, I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush again. Dry it off. And then I am going to fill in the bottom portion of the lower half of the wings with our minted aqua. I'm still working with this number eight flat brush, but when I get to some of those smaller sections, um, I might trade it in for a round brush or an even smaller flat brush. Uh, 
I don't know if you guys can hear it. I hope you cannot, but um, my metal buttons from my top are rubbing against this wooden table and it sounds like birds chirping and it's really putting me in the spring mood. Okay, now I'm going to trade it in for a smaller brush. This now is a number two flat, and it's really going to help me get into all of the nooks and crannies of our scalloped pattern here. All right, folks, I'm going to rinse this brush and then I'm going to go ahead and load some of my festive fuchsia onto my palette. I love this color. It's so pretty. And I'm going to use our festive fuchsia to fill in the body of our butterfly. Okay, I'm going to switch my small flat brush and now I am going to pick up um, this really small liner brush. Um, 
but whatever kind of smaller detail brush that you like to use um, for creating straight lines. Um, a lot of people like to use a liner brush. A lot of people like to use a, a round brush that's on the thinner side, whatever you prefer. We're gonna go ahead and paint in the antenna of our butterfly. Okay, and now I'm going to reach for my heat gun again and go ahead and dry all of these painted sections. Okay, so now that all of our major sections are painted in, it's time for the fun part. So I'm going to pick up my pencil um, and I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through some of the sketches that I did when I was creating this painting um, before we go ahead and fill them in with paint. So you'll kind of see in our finished butterfly here that the uh, larger portions of the wings kind of have a scalloped pattern to them. So when the um, arches of the scallop pattern meet, that little um, section right here, I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna working upwards, kind of curving, take it right up to the body of my butterfly. And then I'm gonna mirror that same pattern on the opposite side. Kind of like this. It almost kind of looks like a clamshell. Okay. And then we're gonna kind of repeat what we just did, but how the lines that we just applied to our canvas are pretty straight and they are pretty curved. These lines that we're about to sketch in right beneath them are gonna be a little bit more organic, a little bit more loose. You can see in our finished painting here, they have a little bit more of a wiggle to them. But we're gonna do the same thing and connect these two. Some of these lines I'm kind of intentionally um, placing in a bit of a wiggle just to add some depth and interest into our final piece. Okay. All right. So now I'm gonna start to focus on the top half of our wings. So about an inch right here from the body of our butterfly, I'm gonna stick my pencil down there and I'm gonna kind of create an arch, kind of jetting out and then coming back to the top there. Okay, once you have your arch though, we wanted to get kind of the basic 
um, direction down. Same thing that we just did on our minted aqua. I'm gonna add a little bit of a wiggle to it just to add some interest. And then going back, I'm gonna erase that straighter curved line that we made. The curved line was really kind of a guide. And then on the opposite side, they don't have to be symmetrical. That's kind of the beauty of painting something that's um, from nature, like painting flowers or animals, um, is that everyone's painting is going to look different. And I think that's great because, you know, in nature, not all flowers look the same. Not all butterflies look the same. Um, nothing can be totally symmetrical. So I am not worried at all about my two lines at the top here being symmetrical, just as long as they're pretty similar. That's all I'm worried about. All right, <clears throat> so once you do that, now I'm gonna go ahead and start at the top of my wing here. I'm about an inch and a half, and I'm going to create a zigzag line that falls down to the bottom of that pink wing. And then you already guessed it, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm not creating um, a zigzag line with you know very hard lines. They're still gonna be very loose and curvy. Okay. Now we're ready for the fun part. Start starting to paint in all of these details of our butterfly. So I'm gonna go and reach again for my detail brush. Again, you can use a liner brush, a thin round brush, whatever brush you feel the most comfortable at using to create small um, detailed lines or patterns on a painting. I'm gonna go ahead and dip back into that light aqua color that we mixed. And remember, this is a ratio of two parts minted aqua to one part teal. And we're gonna use this color to fill in those lines that we sketched out on our minted aqua wings. And we're just filling in those lines. All right, now I'm gonna rinse my brush. Oh, actually, you know what, before that, now I'm gonna still keep the same color paint on my small brush, and I'm gonna use it to fit, to create tiny little ovals on the bottom section of my wings. So in this biggest section here that kind of trails down to um, that little, you know, hanging off portion of our wing, I'm gonna create the biggest oval here Mirror that on the other side. Does not have to be perfect. I'm going to make a smaller oval above. Another smaller one above that. About the same size as the previous one. And then the smallest oval 
at the bottom. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. And now we're gonna go ahead and pick up some of our minted aqua with the same brush. And we're gonna fill in these lines that we sketched out on top of our darker aqua color. Okay, rinsing my brush again. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply some of our light lavender to our palette. And then taking that detail brush that we were working with, I'm gonna load some of my light lavender onto that brush. And now we're gonna fill in the inner arch of our pink wings. Like so. And then coming from opposite directions, branching off from that purple line that we just filled in, I am going to create like centimeter long little tick marks coming off of that line. And then repeat the same thing on the opposite side. like that. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush again. And next, I am going to pick up with my detail brush some of that festive fuchsia, and we're gonna fill in these lines, these squiggly arches that we sketched in with our festive fuchsia. Okay, so this next step is kind of optional, but I like it because I think it adds some depth to the painting. You can kind of see in our finished butterfly here, um, on this pink fuchsia line, some of the sections are a little bit thicker than some, um, kind of congregating towards the top middle half. So if you just want to go back and really just kind of widen some of those lines, I think it adds a lot of interest to the final piece. 
just kind of a couple so that some are wider, some are thinner. Like so. All right. So now I'm going to rinse this brush again. And we are so close, you guys. So I am going to grab my number two flat again and I'm going to dip it into my minted aqua and kind of right inside our um, purple lines I'm going to paint some minted aqua ovals I'm actually going to switch it out for my detail brush. Flat brush was a little too big. Repeat the same thing on the other side. I like to make some of the ovals longer, some of them shorter. Just like that, all right? Okay, so next we are going to add some of our desert flower to our palette. And I am going to take my number 10 flat, really just, or I'm sorry, my number two flat. And if you're following along at home, um, just take a really thin flat brush I'm sorry, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Opposite of wide, skinny flat brush. <laughs> I'm gonna dip it into my desert flower. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the curvature of our purple line and we're gonna use the width of our flat brush and just let that be the width of these little tick marks that we're gonna add. And we're kind of spacing them about a centimeter apart. And I'm gonna follow the same thing on the opposite side. Uh, by the way, Emma, just an update on time. It's 8.31, no rush, just, okay. just let him, you know. Well, hurry it up. All right, so going back now, I am going to apply a little bit more vintage white onto my palette. And we're gonna mix together about a one-to-one -one ratio of our um, conch shell and our vintage white to create a really beautiful soft pink color. Okay, once you have this mixed up, I'm gonna take this really beautiful soft pink and in between each stroke, that we made on our um, butterfly with our desert flower. We're gonna, um, every other paint in a stroke with that new light pink color. And I personally like it when the, um, the strokes are different lengths. I think it adds some depth to the painting. So I'm making my desert flower strokes a little shorter and my light pink strokes a little bit wider or longer rather. Okay, then I'm gonna dip my brush. Picking up again, my detail brush. I am going to make three lines with that soft pink um, at the 
two upper corners of our butterfly here. So one, two, three, the middle one being the longest and the ones at the sides being shorter. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And now I'm going to dip it into my festive fuchsia. And I'm gonna take my detail brush and just go ahead and almost like we're tracing, paint a circle around those tick marks that we did. Really outlining those. Okay, we are so close, you guys. I can taste it. So now rinsing that detail brush again, I am going to now load it with our desert flower. And we're gonna do the same thing we just did and outline our minted aqua ovals. Do it on the other side. All right, without rinsing our brush, we're gonna start to paint little arches in the body of our butterfly going all the way down, some downward curved arches, almost like little C's. Go ahead and rinse your brush. And then, I think this was the first color we used or maybe one of them, we're gonna go in with our teal and starting about an inch from uh, where our minted aqua, from where our minted aqua meets up with our pink, starting about an inch from that on either side, we are going to outline the butterfly wings with our teal, really um, securing the shape of our kind of scalloped butterfly wing. All right, repeat the same thing on the other side. Okay, and then our final step for our butterfly tonight, um, we're gonna go ahead and create little C strokes at the top and the bottom of our um, light aqua circles that we have on the bottom half of our wing. Little comma strokes, not touching, but starting and ending somewhere in the middle of these circles. And there we have it, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and sign my painting. The bottom oh, and then the little polka dots on the antennas. Oh, thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm not done yet. I'm rinsing my detail brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and dip it right back into my festive fuchsia really quick. And don't forget the little polka dots 
on the antennas of our butterfly. And with that final stroke, we are finally done with garden gingham. So thank you guys so much again for tuning in with our class tonight. Um, like always, this video will be posted on Michael's YouTube page tomorrow. So if you had trouble following along, I know it was really quick because we only had an hour, but tomorrow you'll be able to go back and rewatch at your own leisure. Um, don't forget to post your paintings on social media using the hashtag make it with Michaels and plaid crafts. We'd love to see um, all of your finished paintings. Um, it was a pleasure painting with you all tonight. I hope that you have a lovely spring if I don't see you again um, and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.